Gracias. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Yes. Glory. I uh, I want to tell everybody, I kind of apologize this morning because I've been telling you that I was going to preach this, this message, a stone cut without hands, finish that series up. Uh, but... I, you know, I've come to the conclusion after a couple weeks, or about three or four weeks, actually, God changing things up on us, that I, it's not time for me to preach that message yet. So you just have to bear with me. I will get back to that and share it with you. One thing I will say for sure is this, that our world is changing very rapidly. And the this things in our nation, the circumstances in our nation are changing and we don't know what the future holds but if we look at bible prophecy we can see that things are going to deteriorate in society to the point that man is going to either cry out to god for help or he's going to be destroyed you know you read the book of Revelation, you see that things are, are coming down the road. How far away is that? We don't know, but we, all, but we can read the signs of the times. And I will say to you this morning, stay close to the Lord. Be prepared for whatever comes your way. Trust the Lord no matter what. He has promised that he will never leave us. He'll never forsake us. He'll always, always be with us. And I'll say this also. You know, I don't know. I, I don't have all the details of Bible prophecy and have it in order and understand it. But I could tell you this. Some of those who are espousing certain uh, prophetic directions that things are going to happen uh, don't know what they're talking about either. I, you know, it's just a reality. We don't have all the information. God knows. We sometimes speculate. And some of the things that we have... Uh, speculated on and we've built up this whole um, scenario of how things are going to happen we're going to be surprised in the end how God is in control of everything amen, amen. okay I, I just wanted to share that with you so this morning what we are going to do is we're going to talk about we're going to begin talking about understanding your gift or gifts First of all, I'd like to mention we have those three events, uh, several things going on here at the, the church. We, of course, the, there is uh, camps going on for our kids and for teens. There's also the um, uh, Fun Fest coming up. Tammy just keeps the time, make sure everybody knows we need people to sign up. Sign up out there for our, our fun fest. Get involved. We have to have everybody involved. In all three of these events that I'm talking about right now, fun fest, Bible school, we need everyone to, to be involved with Bible school to help out in some way, and also then our community outreach. Uh, we're going to need a lot of people involved and um, just support. And that's one of the reasons I want to talk about gifts because Everybody in the body of Christ has gifts. And we want to, we want to talk about this and understand it a little bit. Uh, we're, I'm going to do a, a series on gifts, talk about gifts, and then at the end of it, we're going to take an assessment where we're going to, uh, each and every one of you will know at the end of that assessment your primary gifts and your secondary gifts and how you can plug in to the body of Christ and be used by God to be able to minister to other people. And you will, if you operate in your gifting, you will fit right in where God wants you to. Sometimes we try to operate outside of our gifts. We try to do things that, you know, we're trying to figure this thing out. Well, the reality is God has gifted you, and we'll talk a little bit about that this morning. Your gifts are so vitally important to the body of Christ. A school was wrapping up 
uh, the school year, and the students were bringing presents in to their teacher. The, um, the local florist, the, the child brought some plants and flowers in to the teacher. The, the candy store owner brought, uh, the, the child brought candy and, and sweets in. And, and one little boy by the name of Tommy, his mother was periodically sending uh, preserves, you know, homemade preserves and, and jello, jellies and stuff like that into uh, the teacher. So Billy came in one day with this big box. And the teacher did, had no idea what it was. But she, you know, surmised that it was probably some kind of canned goods and preserves and th those kind of things. And uh, she was really thankful for it. And, uh, but she noticed that the, uh, the box was, you know, whatever the contents was, they were leaking just a little bit. So she went over to it and she said, Tommy, and she took a little bit of it and tasted it. What is this? Is this strawberry preserves? No. Is it uh, some kind of, she tasted it again. Is it some kind of jam? No, no. So she tasted it a third time. She said, I don't recognize that taste. What is it? She said, and Tommy just beamed. He said, it's a puppy. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Knowing what your gift is is vitally important to you and the body of Christ. Yes. We want to know what our gifts are. Knowing your spiritual gift is so very important. I want you to know, I believe this, that no local body will ever be all that God wants it to be until every member understands their gift and is serving. That's right, that's right. If you're not being used and serving in the body that you're in, in this body, then you're missing out and the body of Christ is missing out. Because we need everyone. We are a body, and we need each other to function properly. So knowing your gift is vitally important. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10 and 11 says this, As each one has received a gift, now everyone has received a gift, minister it to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If anyone speaks, let him speak as the oracles of God. If anyone ministers, let him do it as with the ability which God supplies, that in all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom belong the glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. So there's a lot packed in to this, uh, these two verses here. First of all, everyone's received a gift. And you're supposed to use those gifts to minister to other people, both in the body and outside of the body. And the overall purpose of this is that God and Jesus Christ receive the glory. It's not about you getting a pat on the back, because sometimes you won't. You're just using your gift. You're doing what God's told you to do. But it is about Jesus being glorified. And when we do it properly, corporately as the body Christ will receive the glory that's our ultimate goal that Jesus Christ will receive the glory so the, my first point this morning is what is a spiritual gift give me just a second here all right this is just a partial definition because I'm going to uh, follow up with the rest of it and in, in my next point, a distinctive ability given by the Holy Spirit. It's a distinctive ability given to you by the Holy Spirit. That means that when you become born again as a believer in Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit imparts spiritual gift in your life. Mm -hmm. Gift or gifts. So each and every person in here has spiritual gifts. Now, what I'd like to do is distinguish between what I call spiritual gifts and gifts of the Spirit. This is just a way for me to keep 
the two uh, somewhat separate because I see them, the functioning of them so much different than they are. I see the spiritual gifts that we're going to be talking about as the laborers in the body of Christ. And I see the gifts of the Spirit, which are found in Corinthians chapter 12. I see those as tools to be used by each and every laborer as we encounter people in ministry. As we are sharing the, sharing the gospel or we're sharing our, the, the gift that we have with people, we need these tools, which are healing and miracles and words of knowledge, words of wisdom, prophecy. All these, There's nine gifts of the Spirit that can be used by every member of the body of Christ. It can be uh, that the Holy Spirit will impart upon you when you need them. And that's why in the body, when we function in the, the gifts of the Spirit, that's why from at one time, one person will be used in a word of knowledge, another time somebody else will be used in a word of knowledge. Because it's a diverse gift that is imparted as the Holy Spirit wills, as He desires. Not as we desire, yes. but as He desires. Most of the spiritual gifts are found in the New Testament. Romans chapter 12, 3 through 8, Ephesians 4, 7 through 16. I'm just going to give you those scriptures and you can see the list. Service, exhortation, we'll talk about these. Leading, teaching, giving, helps, apostleship, pastor, teacher, administration, evangelist, hospitality, uh, intercession, deliverance, and then there are two that we find in the Old Testament, craftsmanship and music, and I have a couple of scriptures, Exodus and Second Chronicles, uh, that talk about that. Uh, the craftsmanship in the New King James Version is called uh, artisans, uh, and it really covers a vast array of giftings that God imparts into people's lives. Uh, all kinds of arts and craftsmen, of the ability to be able to build and erect and design things. God imparts these things into people's lives. Now, sometimes people have certain talents that, like music, is a talent. Pastor Otis has had a talent in his life. For music. Mm -hmm. Ivy has had a talent. Just about everybody up here has had a talent. That doesn't necessarily mean that they have, have the gift of music. But because we know and we see the moving of the Holy Spirit in our worship team, we know that these people up here have the gift of music. Because it's not just about playing and singing. It's about moving in the Spirit of That's God. Right. It's about hearing what God is saying at the time. You know, when, when Pastor Otis or Ivy, they suddenly have a song that's not on, on our agenda. That's being led by the Spirit of God. Mm -hmm. And he moves on them, and he moves on the congregation, and we flow in the Spirit. That's how we know that the gift has been enhanced, or the talent has been enhanced with the gift Come on, sir. of the Holy Spirit. Does this make sense to you? Mm -hmm. Okay, because lots of people have talents. You have ability. There's, art, there's, there's many people who have artistic ability and talents. Does not always mean that they're gifted by the Holy Spirit. But when they're gifted by the Holy Spirit, everyone knows. Because the Spirit of God moves upon that person and they design or, or they create or they do something that is so unusual and it's right on and it's led by the Spirit of God. And these things, all, just about every one of these gifts can be very true. And then there are times when the Spirit of God will impart something on an individual. I wish I'd have got a story about someone uh, because I've heard these things in the past, but I, I've, I've never really followed up on the, the, uh, uh, the stories. But I've heard stories of people who had absolutely no musical talent at all. 
They were born again, and suddenly, by the power of the Holy Spirit, they were able to mu- play a musical instrument, and not just play it, play it wonderfully, and lead people in the worship of God. I, have I, am I the only one that's heard those stories? Have you, have you all, everybody's heard stories like that? Okay, good. You know, what? doesn't make them true just because we heard them, but uh, hopefully they are. Because, you know, it seemed like people were telling the truth about those things happening. uh, One one name in particular I remember was uh, Ben Tankard. Ben Tankard? Ben Tankard, years ago. He was at the Brownsville uh, uh, revival. He couldn't play. But now if you listen to him play piano, Beautifully. Beautifully. He okay. Thank you for following up with that. I appreciate that story. Good. So we have it verified. Absolutely. It does happen. Praise God. Hallelujah. All right. So um, as we're talking about the, these gifts, you know, we're going to be, we're going to get into these things and talk more about, uh, you know, a little bit about them individually. And, and then we'll just be able to take this assessment and together uh, we're going to grow in the body of Christ. We're going to grow in our gifts and our, our abilities. Now, the gifts of the Spirit that I was talking about is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 4 through 11. Now, the Bible does not clearly distinguish between these two. But I will say this, through experience and the Word of God, now, you never, you never establish any kind of uh, belief system or doctrine on experience only. Okay, you all on board with me with that? Okay, because that can get you in a lot of trouble. Your experience, if you have experience, it must line up with the Word of God. So, I do believe that we can back this up with the Word of God, uh, making, uh, establishing the difference between spiritual gifts and gifts of the Spirit. Because in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 27, it says, If anyone speaks in a tongue, and we're talking about one of the gifts of the Spirit, let there be two or at the most three, each in turn, and let one interpret. This scripture seems to be telling us that there's going to be different people, different times being used to give tongues and interpretation. So it's not one of those gifts that's just imparted to Uh, an individual in the congregation or two or three individuals. It's something that happens and moves upon the congregation and is used throughout the body of Christ. In that same chapter in 1 Corinthians, verse 31, for you can all prophesy one by one that all may learn and all may be encouraged. Once again, one of the gifts of the Spirit is prophecy. And what does he say? Everyone, all. He doesn't say that about any of the other gifts. The gifts are diverse. The gifts are, plant, are placed in the body of Christ so that we're all built up and encouraged. But the prophecy says all can prophesy. That's one of the reasons that I believe that the, the gifts of the Spirit are different in their operation and how they operate in the body. And as the Apostle Paul is teaching the Corinthians how to operate in the gifts of the Spirit in their gatherings, that's in chapter 12 in Corinthians. Now, you you have to understand, when he's talking about the gifts of the Spirit, he is, those nine gifts I was talking about, he is instructing the church at Corinth how to operate in these gifts in a gathering, in a, a worship service like we're having how that these gifts are supposed to operate, decent and in order. And one of the things that he says to them in verse 11, but one in the same spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually as he wills. As he wills individually in the body. As the body comes together and worships. One in the same spirit. And then the last scripture I want to share with you because it tells us that these signs are going to follow all the believers. Mark 16, 17, and 18. And these signs shall follow those who believe. Who, is, who are these signs going to follow? Those who believe. Those that believe. Everyone that believes. 
Everyone that's a believer, these signs are going to follow. And it gives us some of the signs, some of the, the uh, gifts of the Spirit that we read in Corinthians. In my name they shall cast out demons. They shall speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents and will drink anything deadly. It will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they shall or will recover. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. That's, that's the operation of the Holy Spirit working through individuals, manifesting the gifts of the Spirit in the body of Christ. Now, I'll leave it at that because this teaching is not about the gifts of the Spirit. I've talked about that extensively in the past, and I'll be talking about it again in the future. But this teaching is about spiritual gifts. The spiritual gifts that is imparted to each and every one of us as when we become born again. So uh, my second point is this. All Christians receive spiritual gifts. So the full definition of a spiritual gift is the distinctive ability given by the Holy Spirit to every born-again believer in Christ. Anyone who says, I don't have a spiritual gift, is either not a born-again believer, or you do not understand the giftings that the Holy Spirit imparts in people's lives. Now, if you're not a born-again believer, that needs to be taken care of. If you truly do not have a spiritual gift, and you can say to me, you can look me right in the eye and say, Pastor, I don't have a spiritual gift. We need to take care of that so that you can become born again. And then the Holy Spirit will impart a spiritual gift into your life. Otherwise, you're just, I use this word, and I hope you don't, me, don't misunderstand that. I mean that you're stupid because ignorance is not stupid. Ignorance is a lack of knowledge. So you're just ignorant of the, the reality of what the Bible teaches and how the Holy Spirit operates in our life. Each believer, according to this scripture, according to Peter, has received a gift. 1 Peter 4.10, as each one has received a gift, minister it to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. No, no one is left out. You may not know what your gift is today, but we're going to find out. And the Holy Spirit's going to reveal to you what your gifting, your gift or gifts are. Because he imparts, here's one of the interesting things about the gifts. If, if you are, if the Holy Spirit gives you one gift, if you use that gift to the, the fullest of your ability, many times, and most of the time I would say, the Holy Spirit will impart other gifts into your life. That's just the way it works. That's right. And as you continue to grow, gifting after gifting after gifting is added to your life. Because it's important for the body of Christ. Acts chapter 2 verse 38 says this, Then Peter said to them, Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now, I'll tell you that because I want you to understand we are talking about spiritual gifts, but the real gift is the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the gift. Mm -hmm. And the gift of the Holy Spirit then manifests in your life through what we call spiritual gifts. It's the manifestation of the Holy Spirit in your life. That's why it's so important that you recognize what your spiritual gift is and that you begin to flourish and flow and be used in that gift and those gifts. Let me go back to 1 Peter 4.10 again. As each one has received a gift, Minister to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. The word gift there in the Greek is charisma. And of course, we all know that term charisma. You, probably, you should because you uh, attend what is referred to as a charismatic church. And charismatic 
believers believe not only in spiritual gifts, but believe in the gifts of the Spirit. And I proudly wear that banner or that label as a charismatic preacher, pastor, teacher, the Word of God. Because I truly believe that the, the, the spiritual gifts are important, but the gifts are the, of the Spirit are equally important in the body of Christ. Without the gifts of the Spirit operating, we are without the weapons of our warfare that we need to defeat the enemy in our life. Mm -hmm. yes, so it's very, very important that those gifts operate. Our Heavenly Father wants to manifest these gifts. And the gift, the Holy Spirit is the gift, but the gifts that he imparts in our lives are gifts of grace. That's what charisma means, gifts of grace, a favor which one receives without any merit, merit of his own. You cannot earn a gift from God. It's impossible. You cannot earn the Holy Spirit. It's impossible. It's imparted to you when you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And he comes to live in you. And then he begins to manifest these gifts because he's such a gracious God, full of mercy, that in spite of ourselves, he gifts us to be able to be the body of Christ together corporately, be everything that, that he wants you to become. Now, sometimes the gift that is imparted in your life can be a little uncomfortable because it moves us outside of who we are into a realm where we must depend on the living God to get us through, to help us to accomplish this thing or this task or be everything that God wants us to be. Being uncomfortable as in using your gift is not a bad thing. In fact, I sometimes think uh, that it keeps us on the cutting edge when we're a little uncomfortable with who we are. When we start to get comfortable in the position that God uh, has placed us in or the gifting that God uh, has given us, we sometimes begin to take it for granted. Or we begin to think, oh, I can do this myself. But I want you to understand something. I, the gift of being pastor and preaching the word of God uh, is uncomfortable yes, sir. for me. But I'm glad that it is. Come on. Because I, I, can't, I cannot stand up here on my own on Sunday mornings or any other time and share the Word of God. It has to be the Spirit of God moving, speaking, directing me. Now, that doesn't elevate me above anybody else in this place. You know, one of the five-fold ministry gifts is pastor-teacher. Sometimes those are cor incorporated together, but we see them as pastor, and we also see the body of Christ as having teachers also. Uh, many people who are not pastor, but they're teachers. They teach the Word of God. So being a pastor and a teacher is uh, just one of the five-fold ministries that what we refer to as upfront ministries, ministries where everybody sees the individual and, and, and recognizes the, the gifting and the calling. Now, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you this um, very humbly that I believe that God through the years has imparted to me a gifting of being able to share the Word of God in a way that I cannot do in and of myself. Mm -hmm. And I'm so thankful for that. Amen. But it is, it's so important that we walk in the power of God and we allow the Holy Spirit to, to move and, and use us in these ways. Let's look at Ephesians chapter 4, verse 16. It says this, From whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies according to the effective working by which every part does its share causes growth of the body for the edifying itself in love. Uh, that's the New King James Version. I, I'm, I apologize. I didn't give that one to you. But let me read it to you out of the New Living Translation because it just kind of, causes it to, to blossom 
and, and causes you to be able to see exactly what it's saying here. He makes the whole body fit together perfectly, not just, you know, you got to force it. When we have to force the body together, there's something wrong. Come on. He makes the whole body fit together perfectly. And praise God, we have a body that's fitting together perfectly. And with God's help, we're going to continue to walk in that perfect uh, way that God has joined us together. But I got to tell you, the enemy would do everything he can to divide and conquer. Sure. That's his, that's the way he works. He's going to divide, he's going to try to divide and conquer. He'll bring schisms and uh, issues into to families, into lives, into individuals. He'll cause people to try to rise up and create problems. But in the name of Jesus Christ, we will recognize what the enemy is doing. And with God's help, we'll put a stop to it. Amen. Amen. That doesn't Amen. mean that it's going to be easy. It means that we're going to do it. We're going to stand against it. He makes the whole body fit together perfectly. As each part does its own special work. Each part's going to work, to work doing their own special, but it's all going to fit together. It helps the other parts grow so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. That's New Living Translation, yes. Ephesians 4.16. Mm -hmm. The love and the unity is important. That bring, that'll bring me to my, my next point. I want to I say this. My parents graciously gifted to me when I was growing up a place to live. Now, I didn't realize that that was a gift at the time. I thought that, it, that <clears throat> I, you know, that was uh, just something that should happen. But they graciously gifted that to me. They gifted me a place to live. They gifted me food on the table. I got to eat pretty well. When I was growing up, sometimes good stuff, sometimes uh, junk that I probably shouldn't be eating, but, but it was good. I got to have clothing. But you know, the most important thing that my parents did for me as I was growing up, they graciously gifted to me love and unity in our family. And I can't thank them enough for that. Because mm -hmm. that love and unity held us together. You know, we could have got by with less food. We could have got by with, a, you know, a smaller home, less things. Yes. But that love and unity bound us together. Amen. And it still binds our family together today. It's awesome. So that brings me to my next point. But I want to say this. Remember what 1 Corinthians chapter 13, 1 says. It says that I might uh, speak with the, the tongues of men and of angels. Mm -hmm. But if I don't have love, it's just like a sounding brass and a clanging cymbal. Wow. You're just like a noisemaker. That's all you are. You're just a noisemaker without love. And he goes on to say, he said, I can have faith to move all mountains. If I don't have love, it means nothing. The love and the unity must be a part of the operation of spiritual gifts. So my third point is, unity is essential. Psalms 133 Verse 1, behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. How pleasant it is. It makes everyone's life much more pleasant when the brethren are dwelling together in unity. Now, for the most part, through the years, we've had great unity in this body. There's been times, you know, many, many years ago, when there's, there was times when there wasn't such unity. The majority were unified, but then there was a group of people that wasn't unified. And the only thing that can happen 
is that either the Holy Spirit will deal with people's hearts and the unity will uh, supernaturally take place or a split happens. And that's, that's, just, that's the two options. And when we allow disunity to enter into the body of Christ, I can guarantee you that most of the time, splits happen. People split and go their own way. And sometimes it's over silly, stupid things. Let's remember to focus on what is really important. Yes, sir. Let's focus on the kingdom. Let's focus on, on the, 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 the bringing people into the saving grace of Jesus Christ. Let's focus on sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. Remember this, spiritual gifts are given not for us to compete with each other, but for the cooperation of the body of Christ. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said, we must learn to live together as brothers or perish together as fools. That applies to the overall body of Christ. We're going to live together as brothers and share and, and work through our differences and our misunderstandings. And Listen, every relationship has conflict. Conflict is not the problem. It's whether you work through the conflict or not. Yes, sir. That's Conflict good. plus love equals growth. Always remember that. I haven't said that for a long time, but I truly believe it. Con conflict plus love equals growth, both in the family and in the family of God, the body of Christ. Ephesians 4, beginning with verse 1 through 3. The Apostle Paul says, Therefore the prisoner of the Lord beseech you to walk worthy of the calling which you are called, with all lowliness and gentleness, with long-suffering, bearing with one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. In order for everyone to use the diverse gifts to the fullest potential that each and every one of us have, we must be united in spirit and our and in our purpose and our goals. We have various ministry operations in this overall church. A music department, a children's department, ushers, uh, connect groups, um, you know, various different ministries here and there. And, I gotta, and, I, and you, you've got to understand this about uh, me and Tammy both. Neither one of us micromanage. If God has placed a, you in a ministry, we try our best to just give you freedom to use that to do what God has called you to do. However, there's something vitally important, and that is that we always come back to the overall goal and function of the church. Yes, sir. Our yes, purpose. Sir. What is our purpose? Who can tell me what our purpose is? Have I not said this enough? What? Well, yeah, but we, we've been, our, our tagline, what is that? Connecting people, connecting people to God. It is very simple. We're connecting people to God, and that's, if we stay in line with that, and, and connecting people to God, and we have a goal, our goal is to reach a 50-mile radius. We believe we have this calling of God. So we're going to connect people to God in a 50-mile radius. And how are we going to do that? We're going to reach people outside of this church. You're going to do that on a daily basis. We're going to do things like the functions that we're, we're doing to, to bring people in. We're going to go outside of the church into the community and, and create an atmosphere where people will see that God loves them unconditionally. So whatever ministry or whatever gifting you have, as long as you stay on track with those two things, you are free to be used by God to fulfill that ministry. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12 through 20. I want you to turn there with me, please, because this is uh, an important part of functioning as the, the body of Christ. 
1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12 through 20. Give everyone an opportunity to get there. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12 through 20. First of all, Apostle writes, For as the body is one and has many members, let all the members that but all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. So first of all, he's talking about unity here. We're going to be united because we're all a part of the body of Christ. Within the local churches, God has established individual bodies that fit into, or individual members, that fit in the overall body of Christ all over the world. We're all a part of that body. That's why it's so important that we function in our giftings. For one bo- spirit, for by one spirit, we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slave or free, and have all been made to drink into one spirit. He's telling us that the gift here is the spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. For in fact, the body is not one member, but many. If the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I'm not of the body, it is therefore not of the body. And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, am I not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? Of course it is of the body. That, that's what I was saying uh, earlier about the, uh, the uh, five-fold ministering gifts that we see, the upfront ministries. Uh, They tend to be glorified and lifted up more than some of the other gifts. But it's not true. The ministry, the five-fold ministry gifts could not function without all the other gifts functioning properly. You can't function as a, a pastor and a teacher, a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ without Acts of service and helps and music and all the things that go along. Evangelism and all those gifts that need to flow in the body. So they're equally important. Let's not elevate one above another. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole were hearing, where would the smelling be? But now God has set the members, each one of them, in the body just as he pleased. And if they were all one member, where would the body be? But now, indeed, there are many members, yet one body. Hallelujah. That is awesome. There's one body, and we're a part of that one body, and we're functioning together as that body. Mm -hmm. Without unity, we're kind of like it. We're, if, if we're, we're not unified in our giftings and we call ourselves the church, we're, we're kind of like uh, taking a, a, a platter and dishing up uh, flour, sugar, water, egg, vanilla, and then just setting it on the table and calling it a cake. It has to be stirred up a little bit, doesn't it? <laughs> it has to be stirred, and there has to be some, some things done to it. it has to, you have to, believe it or not, you have to put it in the oven to make right. a cake. Come on. That's why it's not such a bad thing that sometimes we go through the oven together. In fact, I believe it unifies us yes. and causes us yes. to become the cake that God wants us to be. Yes, sir. And you know, there, there are certain kind of cakes that I just love. There are some cakes I, I, I don't like that much. But it doesn't matter. You know, we're being unified. We're being brought in and created into the exact, the best kind of cake in the whole world. Mm-hmm. The body. God's functioning. Ephesians 4, 4 says this. There's one body, one spirit. Deaths of you were called and one hope of your calling. Verse 5, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. Verse 6, one Lord, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and 
in you all. That's why it's so important that we become united and we stay united and we are like-minded. As we continue to reach out and we see new people come into this body, we're, we're, we're looking for people who want to come in and be like-minded, who want to work in the kingdom of God. Those who are not like-minded, they'll, they'll fall to the wayside. That's just the way it is. But those who are truly seeking a relationship with the Lord and are like-minded, want to work in the kingdom of God, they will unite with us and we will accomplish incredible things in the near future. For the kingdom of God. But that unity is so important. In one of Aesop's fables, he describes an old man who had several sons. And these sons had problems with getting along with one another. And he tried everything to get them to, uh, to, to get along and be united in their efforts together. And one day, he decided he was going to to give them an object lesson. And he took this great big bundle of sticks and wrapped a rope around it, and he gave it to each of his sons. First, he gave it to his oldest son, and he said, here, break these. And he tried. He couldn't break them. He handed it down to each and every son, and each one tried. They, they couldn't break it. it was, there was no way. It was just too strong. And then he took the string off, of course, and he handed each one of them a stick, and he said, now, Break this. And they each did. Then the old man said to them, The power of unity is bound together by brotherly love. You may defy almost every mortal danger, but bound together by brotherly love. And in this, you may defy almost every mortal danger, but divided, you will fall prey to your enemies. How true it is. And it will happen in the body of Christ as well. As we study and we learn about our gifts, we're going to unite together and move forward to be used by the living God to touch and minister life to other people. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 12, one of my favorite verses a cord of three strands is not quickly broken. Mm-hmm. When we're bound together, it's hard to break us. Stand with me. Boy. If you'd like to have special prayer this morning, I want to invite you to come forward and we'll lay hands on you, pray for you if you're sick. We'll pray for healing. We believe that God is still a healer. He's still moving. If you have some other prayer concern, please come up at this time and we'll pray with you.